Hi. Uh, today, today we are going to start a new chapter called quantile regression. Uh, quantile regression is kind of an extension of the, the linear regression that we learned earlier. Ah, before starting the main theory, let's let me talk a little bit about references. Uh, I think the quantile regression becomes more and more important these days as uh, more data, like larger data, are available. Uh, but unfortunately, in the classical textbooks, the quantile regression is touched very briefly. There is ne nearly no textbook that considers quantile regression seriously. So uh, let me let me just list just a few brief uh, textbooks. Green. Uh, Green textbook has maybe the most comprehensive content about quantile regression. So if you want to read a one textbook chapter, I recommend you uh, Green. And Bruce Hansen and Bruce Hansen's lecture note has also a very brief uh, discussion about quantile regression. And Uldrich also has a very brief uh, discussion about quantile regression. Under maybe uh, maybe they may use a different name like least absolute deviation estimator or median regression are just different names or like special case of quantile regressions. Mm, these textbooks and other textbooks, other classical textbooks, do not have a good chapter or any any chapter about quantile regression. Instead, one another um, another textbook that you may want to read is mostly Hamlet's Echometrics. Uh, this textbook this textbook has kind of less focus on mathematical derivations, but more focus on empirical applications and how why you need to use quantile regressions and what's the difference, how to interpret them. So I recommend you to read the chapter about contact regression from this textbook. And also, you may online, you may find online lecture notes uh, by Imbens and Ulderich. A chapter, lecture 14. So they had a uh, kind of online uh, lectures in the past, I don't know when it was and they updated, uploaded their lecture notes. And chapter 14 was about quantile regression. It's also recommended. Uh, and online James Powell, uh, James Powell, Jim Powell's uh, lecture note or from CEMMAP, CEMMAP. Uh, uh, CEMMAP is the research center, center for econometrics and blah, 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 blah. I don't know what it, stands for. But anyhow, it's a research center at uh, LSE, UCL, in, in, in the United Kingdom. So <clears throat> uh, James Powell, he is uh, one of the most famous econometrician now at Berkeley, maybe, uh, has a nice lecture note about quantile regression too. And maybe the key person, key, key figure in this uh, topic is Roger Quenker. Roger Coenker was a professor at UIUC, Uni uh, University of Illinois at Auburn Champaign, but he retired now. Maybe he is in London. I don't know if he's teaching there, but he's the most important person in uh, developing quantile regression in econometrics. So he has some, um, some important and nice survey papers like So 2001, Quenko, Roger Quenker and his co-author had a nice survey paper on JEP, Journal of Economic Perspectives. Also, Quenker himself has textbook on only on quantile regression, but this is too difficult, too technical maybe for you. And Quenker has a more recent survey paper til, uh, titled as Quantile regression, 40 years on. So 
CoinCore was the pioneer of this method like in the 70s and so he's the most influential guy in, in quantile regression. So uh, searching from his papers would be a good starting point. So let me introduce the basic idea of <coughs> basic idea of quantile regressions. Introduction. So let's see. so we in the classical uh, linear regression model. Simply speaking, the linear regression model is and this. Or, but here, let's think about uh, instead of this, now let's strengthen the assumption to this. So we call this mean uh, this on correlatedness. This is on correlatedness assumption, and this is mean independence assumption. The mean independence assumption is stronger. So if epsilon and x are mean independent, then automatically they are uncorrelated, but the other way does not uh, hold. Then it means that the, uh, the mean independence assumption means that this. So it's clear, simple, it's easy to understand why, or how, wh how we got this. So it's linear in X. It's, so that's why we, um, the key assumption is the, key assumption is, is that the mean of Y is linear in X. Now I am going to change this assumption. So let's think about this assumption. I'm going to So let's consider alternatives an alternative to uh, assumption 1. I am going to consider median of y i given i plus x i. Oh, oops. X i beta. So there is no problem with this. So if you are interested in the expectation, then you may use uh, this assumption and use the classical linear regression model. But there is no reason, there is no reason for this to be an expectation. You may use median. The median is a, a reasonable alternative to the expectation. So this is also a nice model, make like reasonable model. Then you can write it as, then it means that implies that. So, So it implies the same linear regression and this. So if you think about this with this, the mean independence assumption is replaced by the mean independence um, is replaced by uh, the median independence assumption. Also, it is just an assumption. There is no reason to to uh, impose an assumption on only on the expected value. You may consider the median instead of the mean 
So it's a reasonable uh, alternative to the mean regression. I will explain later why, when this will be more useful than the mean regression. And let's, e let's extend this idea to uh, other quantiles. That means I am going to consider this form where q tau y x means is the conditional uh, tau quantile of y given x. In other words, probability y is smaller than x i beta given x i is tau. So they are equivalent. So this means tau quantile means probability below that is tau. So it's it's no problem. Just you may consider you may consider any quantile. Tau lies between uh, and or tau be, tau between zero and one. Zero and one, any, any number. If you choose 0 0.5, then um, if tau equals to 0.5, it becomes a median regression. So exactly the same. We just extended the median uh, to more other quantiles. And um, you can rewrite it as Similarly, you can rewrite this as quantile this. So uh, the, the structure is identical. Structure is identical. So the linearity does not, does not change. We consider the same linear regression uh, type equation. But what's different here is the exogeneity, uh, exogeneity condition is imposed on median or quantiles instead of the mean. So in the classical regression considered mean independence, but now we consider quantile independence. Or you can think it as, you can rewrite it as this. Always probability below zero is uh, tau. So equivalent, just definition. This is the uh, definition of quantile. So it's another problem. Um, then uh, later, I am going to, of course, of course, uh, the coefficient implied by each assumption can be different. The coefficients, so for example, the coefficient from the mean regression, the beta, beta from the mean regression can be different from the beta from median regression. So nothing is like, none of them is like wrong. So both are reasonable estimates, but when you interpret them, you have to be careful. And when you study them, uh, you have to utilize the assumptions, correct assumptions. So that's the only difference. And we are going to study in this chapter, we are going to study uh, how to handle this type, this general quantile regression model. And it has many nice features uh, and I will introduce them uh, with examples in the next video.